the first thing that you should do is not ever be in that stage. What is a high value man? A high value man is the best of the best. It's the top percentage of men. It's like this thing that you see where it's like top 1% of men or top 0.01% of men. Right now, there are certain traits, certain qualities that each man can have that will make them into a high value man. But in terms of like, oh, this is exactly what high value is. Well, there's no set model because each high value man is going to be different than the next high value man. All right, so I'll give you some examples here so you can kind of understand what I'm saying. The first example is Elon Musk. Second example is Conor McGregor. Third example, we'll say Pablo Picasso. Fourth example, we will say, I don't know, Andrew Tate. All right, now I'm not praising any of these people. I'm just giving examples out here. These are what you would say high value men, but they're all high value in different ways, meaning that they all share similarities, but they all have differences. It's not a set model. They're, they're not following this set program, this set way of being, right? But there are certain things, certain traits, certain qualities that each of them share. And these are the things that I believe make a man into a high value man. All right, now it, it's composed of five different parts. You have the social, mental, physical, financial, and spiritual. I'm gonna get into all of these. I'm gonna make videos on each of these to share with you what I've found along the way and what's been helping me to develop myself into a high value man. Uh, but for attention sake, for this video's sake, we'll, we'll keep it short. I'll only focus on one point and that one point is the mental. I believe the mental should be the first part that every man should focus on. Why do I say this? Because I went through many years with a pretty trash mental state. You yourself, well, damn, like, how do I get out of that stage? Well, the first thing that you should do is not ever be in that stage. And because of this, it doesn't matter what kind of success I started to achieve, whether that had been um, becoming very social, whether that meant having the body that I wanted, whether that meant having way more money that I ever thought I could ever have, whether that meant being very, very spiritual and just very at peace and all that stuff. Listen, the mental state is the most important one to start off right? because your mental state depicts what your life is going to be. Your internal state affects your external state. So if internally you are all over the place, then your life is going to be all over the place. If internally you are depressed, externally you will experience that. All right, so you have to learn real quick what it is that you are struggling with. What issues, what problems do you have mentally? Don't try to lie to yourself. Don't try to say that you are this perfectly fine individual, this, this normal person. Listen, there's no such thing as normal. Look around you, talk to people. There's no such thing as normal. No one is normal. No one has this perfect picturesque life where everything is just going perfect for them. No one is perfect. Everyone has issues. So you have to be very real, very honest with yourself. Ask yourself, what problems do you have mentally? You don't have to tell anyone. You don't have to tell anyone. This is for you only to understand. All right, maybe you get upset very easily. Maybe you're very hot-headed. 
Maybe you're very pessimistic. Maybe you are unrealistic. Maybe you're too realistic. You see, these are things where you just you just gotta you just gotta be honest with yourself. See where you are mentally. Because only then can you start to make changes in the right direction. Now, how do you start to see where you are mentally? Well, a good thing to start practicing now is a self-reflection type practice. What does this mean? This means you go for a walk and you just let yourself think. Let yourself think about what's going on in your life, maybe about things that happened in the past or I don't know, just whatever comes up, honestly. You can do this while walking, you can do this while sitting, you can do this um, while writing, you can do it as you know, you're journaling, if you want to journal, if you want to keep track of it, you can do this. It's not necessary, but you can do this. But self-reflecting will let you start to see exactly where you are, what kind of problems you have, and how you can start fixing these things. Because a lot of times we want to seek the answers externally, but the answers are actually already inside of us. And this is not to get like, it's not to get like extra with y'all. This is just being real. Like if you just take the time, you start thinking to yourself, you'll come to the answers yourself. All right, so take that time, self-reflect, make it a part of your day-to-day -day practice and you will start to see what problems you have and what you have to do in order to get past these problems. And on top of that, self-reflecting each day is going to allow you to process things every single day. Because again, like we don't just, we didn't just experience the past and then now we're only experiencing this and that's it. We're going to continue experiencing for the remainder that we have here while we are alive. So because we're continuing to experience it, then that means we need to continue to process the experience. We need to continue to understand what's going on. We need to continue to grow. Growing is not a process where you grow and then you stop growing and then you're done. And you, you continue to grow for the rest of your life. So there is no end point here. You're just constantly growing, constantly getting better. This is the whole point. All right, you, you're not aiming for a finish line. This is something that you're gonna do for the rest of your life. So the practice that you start doing is self-reflecting practice. Another practice that's very important is meditation. And I'm gonna say that your intention with the meditation is also very important. So if we're talking about the mental state here, then in your meditation practice, should have the intention of just increasing your attention span. It's as simple as that. Increase your attention span and be all right with being uncomfortable, which that, that'll come, but it's more so just increasing your attention span. So let's keep it simple, right? Now, how do you increase your attention span with meditation? You can sit down and you can focus on your breathing or you can walk and you can focus on your breathing or focus on maybe a sound that you're hearing. Maybe it's birds chirping, maybe you have music playing in your ear, maybe you have uh, someone that's talking to you and you're focusing in on them. This is the meditation practice. Will you be perfect at it? No. Will your thoughts be all over the place? Probably. That's completely normal though. The whole point is that when you were doing this practice, every time that your thoughts go, you bring them right back. Every time they go, you bring them right back to the thing that you're trying to focus on. You could even focus sitting down, looking at a specific point. Like maybe you got a microwave right in front of you. Like I got a microwave right in front of me right here. If I'm focusing on this microwave and I set a timer for like 10 minutes, that's gonna increase my attention span. Right, why is your attention span important? Why are we trying to increase the attention span? Because with increased attention span, when you do the self-reflecting process, you can go deeper into this process. 
when you go deep into the process, you become more mindful, you become more present, you become more aware, you heal from things better, you process things better. And this is all what the mental game is. This is just you having more mental ease, you being mentally in a sound place. It's like that, that uh, this, I think it's a proverb or something like that. It's something I heard a long time ago where it's like, if there's no enemy within, then the enemy outside can do you no harm. This is essentially what you are doing with the mental state. You're taking care of the internal state so that things outside of you don't affect you. This is very important because let's say you don't take care of the mental state. Let's say that you're only taking care of like the physical state. Yes, you can achieve what you're trying to achieve physically. Maybe you get the body that you want. But what happens when you get injured? What happens when you can't work out? What happens when you lose this body? You didn't take care of the mental state. So mentally, you're probably going to be in a pretty trash place. But if you take care of the mental state, then you understand that your happiness doesn't come from you having this body the way that you want. Right? If you're trying to be successful, you're trying to be a millionaire. If you take care of the mental state through the highs and lows of you developing financial abundance, financial security, you will be at ease. You will not be all over the place because your happiness does not depend on this. This is what I'm trying to get at. If the mental state is on point, everything else is on point. Your happiness is your choice. Your groundedness, your peace, your calmness, this is all your choice. You're the one that can make this happen, but it all starts right here in your mind, right? And the last thing that I will say, practice, keep things very simple here to really get your mental game on point is just move more. If you look at your life, if you look at all of our lives, if you look at everyone around you, we tend to live very sedentary lives. And because we live very sedentary lives, this affects our mental state a lot. Why? Because we were meant to move. If you just look at the human anatomy, right? If you just look at your own body, look at your wrists, how your wrists move like this, how your shoulders, you can move them around like that, how you can bend your legs, you can move, you can walk, you can run, you can jump, you can do all these things. Yeah, your body was meant to move. So you sitting down, you being sedentary is just going to make your mental game worse. So to put it in simple words, just move more. How you move, that depends on you. You can walk more, you can swim, you could run, you could exercise, you could do a sport. There's so many things that you can do here and I'm not gonna go too crazy in that because then we're gonna get into more of the, the physical aspect. And like I said, we're only taking care of one of the traits today, just to make it a shorter video, more simple video. But just move more, choose how you wanna move and you'll see for yourself. It's just mentally, you're gonna feel better. And if you take care of these three things, if you start the self-reflection practice, the focal-based meditation practice, and you just move more, you will notice a difference the first day. And it's, it's a compounding effect. It always gets better. It, it, it honestly does. It always gets better. Because if you're constantly working at it, you're constantly improving, and you're constantly getting to a state where you are more at ease, a state where you are more grounded, a state where you, you can be happy if you wanna be happy. Like everything around you could be going downhill. Like you could have no money. Everyone could have left you, your friends, your family, all this stuff, but you could be really happy in this state because happiness is literally a mental state. That's all it is, it's temporary. And you can choose to have that state when you want that state. 
right? But you have to have that, that mental game on point. So that's it for today. This is the first part of the, the traits, the states. There are many more to come. And I definitely want to speak more on this because I've been reflecting on this the past few days. And I was just thinking back to when I was growing up and I wanted to be better as a man, but I didn't really have the guidance for that. I didn't have the best role models around me for this. So I want to be able to give back here and share that with other men who are going through that as well.